Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of my debt series, where we'll be focusing on methods and tips to make your debt cheaper. If you missed my last video on debt, check it out now. In that video, we went through how to understand and tackle your debt problem with the help of my free debt calculator tool and three useful strategies. Cool, with that said, let's get on with the video. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So in my last video, we focused on how to tackle debt, but did you know there are ways to actually reduce the cost of borrowing too? Now this can be a major step forward in actually improving our debt problem, because in theory, if we are able to reduce the cost of borrowing, we should see a reduction in minimum payments, and therefore we should see a reduction in how much money we lose to interest when paying back our debts. As I already mentioned, this video isn't going to go through strategies on how to pay off debt like the avalanche or snowball method, that was all covered in part one. Before I do continue on, I should make you aware that I am not a financial advisor and I would strongly recommend seeking professional advice before actioning anything, particularly when it comes to debt. There are some amazing charities that can offer you free advice, such as Debtline, Step Change and Citizen Advice. I'll have all the links to their websites in the description box down below. So the first step you can do is to actually speak to your creditors. So these are the organizations you actually owe money to. And I would suggest if you are struggling with debt, then this should indeed be the very first thing you do before following any of my other tips in this video. As speaking to your creditors may result in beneficial changes to your current debt situation. So what you want to do is speak with your creditors and inform them that you are having issues keeping up with your payments and request if there is anything that can be done such as reducing the interest rate or devising another payment plan. These changes aren't guaranteed and they will request some evidence of your income and outgoing as part of the process. If they do happen to agree to any changes, then these changes can either be permanent or temporary. But the great thing about doing this is that you have absolutely nothing to lose by asking the question. The worst thing that can happen is that they just simply say no. Doing this doesn't cost you anything, nor does it affect your credit score. So definitely ask the question. Also, Hitting that like and subscribe button doesn't cost you either. You can actually take the same approach with other creditors that you haven't borrowed money from. So for example, your gas, electric and water company. Another reason why you want to do this first is because lenders are far more likely to be open to making changes if you have a good credit history with them. So you want to ask them early on in case you are at risk of missing a payment, which may make them think twice about making any adjustments. So speak with your creditors. Now the next step is to use something called a 0% balance transfer credit card to transfer all of your credit card debts onto. Now this is a type of debt refinancing method and what this means is we will be restructuring how your debts are in order to make it more affordable and cheaper. So what these balance transfer credit cards do, it allows you to consolidate all of your credit cards under one roof while at the same time offering you an introductory interest rate period of 0%. This means that you can move your debts from credit cards, which probably have high interest rates associated to them, onto an account with 0% interest for a specific amount of time. This can be an amazing way to make debt cheaper, as any money we pay towards the balance transfer card will be put towards the debt itself, as interest is no longer a factor for a limited period. There are, however, transfer fees you usually associate when transferring money onto one of these cards, and this usually is between the region of 2 to 4% of the amount you transfer. So you will want to factor in this cost before getting one and compare it to how much interest you would have paid if you didn't transfer. The fees may seem like a lot, but in most cases, it is still cheaper than if you just stuck with paying interests on your high interest rate credit cards. Now, before we go through how to find the best deals, you should know that you may be restricted on which lender you can actually use when it comes to getting one of these cards. So first off, you will not be able to transfer credit card debt to a balance transfer card if they are from the same lender. And some lenders even extend this restriction to other lenders in the same banking group. So for example, you can't transfer between an HSBC credit card to a HSBC 0% balance transfer card as they are the same lender. And in some cases, this restriction may extend to other lenders in the HSBC banking group, which would mean you wouldn't be able to transfer between First Direct, John Lewis Finance, and the Marks and Spencers Bank either. Cool, with that cleared up, let's head over to the Money Saving Expert website where they have an updated list of some of the best deals currently available. 
Currently, one of their top picks is the NatWest card with 0% at 33 months, which is almost about three years. And it has a 2.9% fee. That means you will be charged 2.9% on the balance you transfer over. And if you don't pay off the card within the 33 months, the interest rate will be changed from 0% to 22.9% APR. Now, before applying to any of these cards, be sure to run an eligibility checker to see how likely you are going to get approved as getting declined will be noted on your credit score and it will have negative implications. So if we quickly go through the pros of getting a balance transfer card, the first one is of course that you will be avoiding paying interest on your credit card debt for at least a specific time period. If you are able to pay off the loan before the introductory period is over, then you won't be paying any interest on the debt whatsoever, which would be the ideal outcome. Another pro is that although the 0% is only available for a temporary amount of time, if you are unable to pay off the debt during that time period, you do have the option to transfer it to another 0% balance transfer card. Although you will have to pay this fee again, again, the benefits on saving on the interest are likely to outweigh the cost of the fee. Now, if we look at the cons, and the first one is that these cards are usually reserved to those with a good credit history. So this may not be so helpful if you are someone who is currently trying to rebuild their credit score. If we do go back to the Money Saving Expert website, however, they do have some top picks on balance cards for those with porous credit scores. You will notice that on these cards, the 0% period is a lot shorter and the interest rate after the introductory period is crazy, crazy high. So if you do have to go fry this route, you do have to be extra due diligent to make sure that you do your utmost to pay off all or at least most of what you can whilst you're in that introductory phase. And another con is that you will be charged a one-time fee on the balance you transfer onto this card. Depending on the amount, this can be quite costly. So do take that into account when deciding if it is a cheaper option. But as I've already mentioned, in most cases, the cost you save on interest will be more than the fee itself, but worth doing the calculation regardless. Another tip is that if you have a personal loan with a lender, it is possible to switch personal loan providers if you have another provider offering a cheaper rate of interest. In order to do this, you will need to contact your existing lender and ask them for a settlement figure to be provided. This number is the amount you would need to pay them today in order to clear your debt entirely. And usually this settlement figure is valid for a number of days, usually until the next month of interest is charged. But do make sure you ask how long the settlement figure is valid for because you will need to make sure you pay off the loan within those days. Otherwise, the settlement figure will change. Once you do have your settlement amount, shop around and find other personal loan providers that will offer you that money, but at a lower rate of interest. And always make sure with any loan you are allowed to settle early and or make overpayments. If you can't do either of them, then I would flat out ignore these. Again, Money Saving Expert have an updated list on their top personal loan picks, which is a good starting place. As you can see, they do an excellent job of updating their top picks and they have actually split it by how much you actually need to borrow. And you may notice that it is a typical behavior with personal loans that the more money you do borrow, the cheaper the interest rate is. But don't fall for this trap. Only borrow the amount you need. In this case, that would be your settlement amount. We can actually take this a step further with tip number four, especially if you have multiple debts from different sources, and that is to consolidate all your debts under one personal loan roof. This will be another type of debt consolidation. So unlike the previous tip, you can also include credit cards and other types of debt here too, and consolidate them all under one personal loan roof. If you really want the best scenario, where possible, you would want to look into utilizing both of the types of debt consolidation tools that I've already mentioned in this video. So using both the 0% balance transfer card for all your credit card debt and your personal loan for anything else. Using a mixture of the two can be a great way to dramatically lowering the amount of money you lose on interest. And it also may lower your minimum repayments too. Now looking at the pros on this, and the first one is that because all of your debts or at least most of your debts are now under one roof, this should be easier to manage and budget for. And because you are securing a lower rate of interest by doing this transfer, your minimum monthly repayments should also reflect this, giving you more room in your budget to tackle your debt using any of the methods I mentioned in part one of this debt series. Looking at the cons, so if you do manage to secure a loan at a lower rate of interest, you may be tricked into just paying off the new lower minimum repayment amounts which will cost you more in the long run. It is key that you do not get complacent and you stick to your budget. 
Yes, we have made borrowing more cheaper, but you are still borrowing nonetheless. And we don't want to prolong this process any more than we have to. Therefore, we want to make sure with any savings you realize by doing this method or any method in this video, for, as a matter of fact, you use those savings to make overpayments to get rid of this debt as soon as possible. Otherwise, the benefit of doing all this is almost redundant. Another type of refinancing is to get a loan from a credit union instead of a bank. So for those that don't know, credit unions are similar to banks in the sense that you can save money with them and borrow from them too. But where they differ is that they are usually much smaller in size and they are usually non-profit organizations set up by members with something in common, whether it be their location or their line of work, etc, etc. But because of the size and the fact that it is self-organized by community, it can be mistaken as an option for those that cannot get help via the regular banking method. Which is incorrect, because one of the benefits of credit unions is they are actually open to everyone, regardless of your debt situation. So it may be worth considering refinancing your debt using a loan from a credit union, as this is typically an overlooked option. Credit unions tend to offer loans between 50 to 3... Credit unions tend to offer loans between the 50 to 2, 3... Credit unions tend to offer loans between the 50 to 2, 3... I can't say it. Credit unions tend to offer loans between the 50 to 3,000 mark. And although these rates may not be the best, they are usually better than payday loans and other questionable avenues. To find a credit union, head over to findyourcreditunion.co.uk and you can search via your location, work, employer or association. You'll be then given a list of options which will link them to their respective websites. One option I got was a union called m for money which was offering a loan at 9.4 to 26.8% APR and this all depended on the size of the loan. Again, this isn't the most desirable rate, but it may be a better option than others. The Bank of England has a list of authorized credit unions that are allowed to operate, so be sure to check out that list before going any further with a company you find. So looking at the pros, and that is credit unions are usually more accessible to those with poorer credit scores. So if you do request a loan with a credit union, they will generally carry out checks on your income, savings, and past history before making a decision. So although it is quite similar to a credit check, you are more likely to be approved with a credit union loan than a regular bank loan. Now, the next point I want to make is neither a pro or a con, but it is something worth considering nonetheless. So depending on the union and how much you borrow, the rate of interest can either be really competitive or pretty horrendous. The difference on this is actually quite vast, so I couldn't actually really decide which bucket to put it into. So definitely check it out for your own needs and then you can decide whether it's a pro or a con. And moving on to an actual con, and that is credit unions can be quite limited in their accessibility. Being part of a credit union does require you to be a member, so there may be some barriers to entry to actually join one, and they may also have limitations on how you can access your account, whether it be limited online presence or even a limited physical presence. Cool, so those are the five key ways that you can make debt cheaper. Let me know in the description box down below if you have any more tips to share that I did not mention, and remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.